Are you considering adding a new canine companion to your life, but you can't wrap your head around the vast amount of choices? Well, in this video, we'll take a look at two different sized breeds, the small and robust pug and the larger working breed, the Malinois. Welcome back to the Fenrir Pug Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. The Pug has a rich history dating back over 2000 years so let's start today by taking a look back at this small dog's backstory. The pug is believed to have been related to the Tibetan Mastiff. They were a particular favourite amongst Chinese emperors and the only way an outsider could own one was to be gifted them. Although they have only been around for over 2,000 years, it wasn't until the late 16th century and the early 17th century that they made their way out of China and the Far East and started finding their way around the world. Dutch traders were responsible for bringing them to mainland Europe, where they soon became a firm favourite of European royalty. They allegedly saved the life of William, Prince of Orange, and as a result became the official dog of the House of Orange. Both Marie Antoinette and Josephine Bonaparte of France owned pugs. They were also popular amongst the British royal family. Most famously, Queen Victoria was a big fan and she also bred them. They were first recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1885 after arriving in the United States after the American Civil War. The Belgian Manoir, as the name suggests, originated in Belgium. They're one of four varieties of Belgian sheepdogs that were developed in the late 19th century. The modern day Malinois can be traced back to this time and more specifically to a breeding pair owned by a Belgian shepherd named Adrian Janssens. In 1885, he purchased a rough haired fawn dog called Voz that he used to herd flock but also bred with a short haired brindled brown dog named Lys. After this initial mating, Voss was bred with his daughters to further establish the line of grey, rough haired and short haired Malinois and fawn rough haired and short haired Malinois. Today, Voss and Lys are recognised as the ancestors of all modern day Belgian shepherd dogs, as well as the Bouvier and the Dutch Shepherd. Breeders decided to give each variety of Belgian Shepherd their own names. A breeder named Louis Hugie Barrett had done a lot to popularise the fawn short-haired Malinois in the city of Malines. The Malinois name was adopted from the city to refer to the fawn short-haired Belgian Shepherd. Hugie Barrett recognised that there was a lack of sheep in Belgium towards the end of the 1800s and turned to showcasing the Malinois' intelligence, obedience and loyalty. Because of this, they were used in the early 20th century as guard dogs and draft dogs, and they were also first bred to be used by the Belgian police. During the First World War, they had many roles in the military, including messenger dogs, Red Cross dogs, ambulance cart dogs, and even light machine gun cart dogs. After the First World War, many American servicemen brought back Malinois and other Belgian Shepherd dogs. The first Belgian Shepherd Club of America was formed in 1924 and they were officially recognised by the American Kennel Club shortly after. The Pug has four basic colours of fawn, silver, apricot and black, although not all of these colours are recognised by different kennel clubs. The UK Kennel Club recognises all four, but the American Kennel Club only recognises fawn and black. They're known for their deep wrinkles on their face and forehead, accompanied by a distinctive thumbprint. Whilst not seen on every pug, the thumbprint is a smudge of black on the forehead. The pug is a small breed, standing up to a height of 14 inches or 35 centimetres, and they weigh up to 18 pounds or 8 kilograms. Although they are small, they are sturdy and are described as having a barrel-like appearance. They have short legs, a wide chest, a flattened face, and a tail that has a natural curl with one loop or two. The Belgian Malinois is a medium-sized Belgian Shepherd that is often confused with the German Shepherd. They're a short-haired, fawn-coloured dog with a black mask. Males will grow to a height of 26 inches or 66 centimetres, at the withers and weigh up to 75 pounds or 34 kilograms. Females are a little bit smaller with a maximum height of 24 inches or 61 centimetres and weighing up to 60 pounds or 27 kilograms. Their coats are short and straight and their fur is particularly short around the head, ears and lower legs. They do have slightly longer hair around the neck forming a collar but not so long that it stands out. They are a double coated breed that generally sheds twice a year. They'll need brushing at least twice a week to keep their coat healthy and to encourage new growth. 
Pugs are a small, quiet breed and are relatively inactive when indoors. If you're looking for a dog to hunt, guard or retrieve, then the pug is not for you. Pugs were bred to be companion dogs, but don't confuse them as just a lap dog. Although they're most happy to be curled in your lap, they are a playful and comical breed that will delight their owners with their silly antics. Their temperament is affected by a number of factors, including training and socialisation. <coughs> Pugs with nice temperaments are curious and playful, willing to approach people and be held by them. Personality-wise, pugs are happy and affectionate, loyal and charming, playful and mischievous. They're a very intelligent breed but can also be very stubborn, which makes training difficult but not impossible. While pugs can be good watchdogs, they aren't known for their excessive barking or yapping. The Malamar is an intelligent and active breed that truly thrives in many tasks. They have a great deal of stamina and enjoy working which makes them a great breed for police work, search and rescue and performance events like agility. They're also a sensitive breed and don't respond well to harsher training methods. Due to this combination of high energy and sensitivity, they're not recommended for first time owners and instead for those experienced with dog training. They love everyone to be included in all the family activities, so they're not well suited to a home where the family's out all day at school or work. They're quick learners and eager to please. As we've already touched upon, they thrive at dog sports, but they also love to play. They've been described as having a high play drive, as almost anything you ask them to do is like play to them. You should address this desire to play through exercise. They're a very high energy breed and you should try to aim for at least 90 minutes of exercise each day, which is best split into three 30 minute sessions. It's not just physical exercise they need, but also mental stimulation. Try and incorporate this as part of a variety of games and exercises like runs, walks, hikes, fetch games of hide and seek, puzzle games and snuffle mats. Without mental and physical exercise, Malamoise can become destructive and show behaviours like barking, chewing and anxious pacing and going to the toilet in the house as well as general destructive behaviour. So make sure you can dedicate plenty of time to exercise when choosing a Malamois because a tired dog is a happy dog. The pug is a popular choice worldwide as a family pet or companion dog. They're extremely friendly even around people they don't know. They're not clingy but they are most happy when surrounded by the people that they love. They'll come to you when they want attention and affection but happily disappear to do their own thing when they want to. They're great dogs with small children. They are very loving and their robust nature means they can handle rough and tumble of playtime with little ones. However, as with any breed, this should always be supervised. Pugs are also ideal around other pets and small animals as they don't show aggression towards them. As with all dogs, socialisation is important, but a well-socialised pug can make for the perfect family companion. A well-socialised Malinois make good family companions too. They're great with children, especially if they've been raised around them. It's important to remember that they have a strong herding heritage. This can sometimes lead them to nip at children's feet and heels during playtime. An adult Malinois who is not familiar with children should be better suited to a home with older children who are mature enough to know how to properly interact with dogs. This is worth thinking about if you're adopting or rescuing an older dog. You should always teach young children how to approach and touch your Malinois and supervise any interactions between them to prevent bad behaviour from either side. Malinois can become aggressive towards other dogs and cats unless they've been raised alongside them. If you want them to get along well with other dogs and animals, it's important to start socialisation early. Ensure you use positive reinforcements and reward appropriate behaviour. The breed does have a naturally high prey drive and natural hunting instincts which can make them challenging with other small domestic pets. This isn't to be said that they can't get along well with them if they've been well socialised and raised alongside them. However, they should never be left unsupervised as accidents can happen. The Pug and the Malinois are two dogs with big differences. They're very different in size and the Malinois needs a lot more exercise both mentally and physically. But what they do have in common is their love for their families and being brilliant with children. The Pug would be more suited to a more relaxed family and the Malinois would thrive in a more outdoor activity family. Whichever sounds more like you, both these breeds will bring you hours of love and joy. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated pug videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Pug Show.